Hello ladies and gentlemen, here we are back at Max's Garage Mahal. Thought we had uh, done another little modification here that we don't necessarily agree with. However, a lot of people are asking me why I haven't done it. And I thought, well, you know what, it, it's not going to hurt to do it. And um, at the same time, we might be able to explain it and show people how to do this modification. And um, so while we're here, and if you remember the last video, we talked about flex forks and how to put them on and, and how I painted mine yellow because I didn't like the black. And, and I thought I'd give a shout out here to, uh, to the place where I bought it. And that is, uh, let's see if I can get this. There, it's focusing a little bit better. Springfield Power Equipment. And they're located in Springfield, Illinois. Makes sense to me. Alrighty, so there you are, Springfield Moors and Power Equipment. So we're going to get back here to uh, to uh, discussing this modification, and we're going to go around this way, take a look at the back of the door. Everyone ought to have one of these things, and uh, kick your <laughs> saws all box around. So down here, um, I'm going to do this like a lot of people do. I'm going to do this holding the camera because I won't be holding it long I'm going to show you how and where we're going to cut this and um, I'm going to take my little pocket gauge here I'm going to stick it inside like this and then I'm going to mark this a line straight across here to the inside and then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to mark this right here so that it comes up intersects this line that will come off of the moor in a straight line like this at some point in time we're going to come up with another piece of material and come around here and fill this in so the disc comes straight on out over like this and makes a deck top so i'm going to stop the video for a moment i'm going to do the marking and i'll show you by putting the um, the gauge back up there again how I arrived at the mark and um, you'll get a better idea of how this is going to operate so I'll be back shortly okay we've marked that and I'm going to lay the gauge out here and show you the markings and try to get in here a little bit closer so that you can see it so again we brought this in until it's locked up against that straight and as you can see we have marked a line with a magic marker arm or a sharpie so it comes out and then as I said earlier we're going to come down the side here and bring this up leave an eighth inch all the way through here and um, there we go with the light flashing in what that's all about and um, then we're going to come inside here and there is a weld right there at two inches so let me get my thumb out of the way two inches and that corresponds to this triangle right here so we're going to lay this at two inches right here as you can see my hand out of the way so you can see it and then we put a mark right at the end of the gauge then we're going to bring this mark up with a 90 degree angle we're going to bring it straight up to here where that falls out and then you'll have a uh, little more open shoot but again I'm going to bring this down to leave an eighth inch cut all the way along here to continue to give us a some sort of guard to guard as you can see the blade when it comes around uh, if you were to come around and dip this deck into some sort of, of um, rock tree post whatever um, you can chew that post or whatever up pretty good with the blade and probably do some damage to the mower not a good idea so we want some protection here and on the cheaper mowers they'll have a little flat deck here or a little flat piece of metal have a slight turn up on it to give it some stiffness and it'll just come right on around like this just to protect that blade so that you keep it off of the blade and that's basically what we're doing here so this may take a lot of cutting and it may take a lot of 
on and off with the camera to get to the point that we're talking about here. And um, what we're going to use is this old 25 year old Sawzall here, Makita Sawzall. And it's been a good one. It's been dropped on the highway at 85 miles. Well, oh, I didn't say 85 mile an hour. I meant uh, 55 mile an hour. And the uh, only thing wrong with it is the lock right here to hold the switch back into own position. So other than that, and that's not a bad deal because that keeps anybody from running it with the uh, trigger on. It, I just go ahead and call it a dead man switch. Mm, bad, bad language, huh? So um, we're going to get some cutting done, and we'll come back um, and show you what we've got so far, and then we'll uh, then we'll do some more cutting and come back. So this is going to be a real chopped up video, but it will at least give you guys an idea. I'm using a sawzall. A person really wanted to, they could do it with a hacksaw, and um, that would be for you younger guys that uh, have more energy than you have since. <laughs> I was one of those guys for a long, long time. Uh, for us old guys, it's tried to uh, work smart, not hard. So um, we'll see how many blades this is going to take and how long it's going to take. And uh, I'll give you an idea. We'll start the uh, clock here in a minute when I start making a cut. And I'll give you an idea how long it took to go from this point to this point. And then across here, we'll give you another idea on down. Something like that. Anyway, we'll we'll uh, just wing it and let you know what we're doing as we go. Alrighty, be back shortly. Okay, it looks like that was just about two and a half to three minutes right there. I'd say probably three would be closer. And uh, it uh, didn't take that long. It'll shake your teeth out, but other than that, it's not too bad. Uh, and I hope the fans, as loud as they are, is not so loud that you can't hear this uh, the audio portion of my presentation so we're going to start over here next on this particular cut and get down at least to here uh, to the top of this reinforcement right here and we'll see how long that takes and I'll get back to you shortly alrighty so here we are we've got that uh, triangular piece cut out here as you can see went right here so now this is over and gone. We'll relay that right up here. You can get an idea. Matter of fact, how would that work right there? Hmm. Let's just take a look. All right. Let's come around here. Go around to this side here. Let's just take a look. See how that would look back there. I can't see it. Not where I can see it, but I think it'd probably be all right. Just need to make that a little bit longer, make it fit, and then weld that sucker in place, and uh, then get this cut down to eighth inch long here, from there to here maybe sweep this in a little bit this way and then just flatten it out as best we can and that should be as about an open a shoot as anybody would need and still have plenty of protection for both your little toes and, um, and that blade and I think it'll look um, pretty neat now the next trick will be to plate this top right in here where this will come out and go straight back here and then plate this in we'll weld it from the bottom we'll spot weld it from the top and keep spot welding it until we've got it solid we'll grind it nice and smooth and get some hustler yellow paint put on there and uh, again so you can see where we're at here you can see the cut there you can see the 90 degrees cut here and uh, when we get a little more done we'll come back and go from there okay I went ahead and put a line on here at the bottom so you can get an idea of the material I'm talking about leaving right here 
get in a little closer. I'll zoom this way, not zoom, but we'll pan this way. And uh, hopefully you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about here. And that should give you some blade protection. Alrighty, got a little phone call coming in, so we'll uh, we'll take that call. All right, here we are back. I'm going to show you where we're at so far. This is with the old Sawzall. We started off getting into the slot with the old grinder over there. And then we came over. And then we started the Sawzall. And as you can see, the Sawzall has made it to right here. And we're going to run this up in such an arc that this will help support and keep from breaking out later. Uh, we don't want that to crack out, so we've decided to grind this out right here, right here, and then roll this down. We'll roll this down further back, giving a nice long arc back down to this point. We're possibly leaving that a quarter and grind it in toward the inside, and grind it in toward the inside. So we will. Get some more done, come back and let you know what's going on. Okay, here we are back again. We'll try to get this down here where you can see it and uh, get an idea of what I've done. And it's not finished yet, it's not ground out, and it's not cleaned up and painted. But this is going to give you an idea of how much material I've removed. Okay, where it came from. And that will uh, bring the top of the blade at the lowest point to the top of the guard here. And as you can see, I tapered this up. I'll round this all out. And I may install this little piece right here, right back here, if you can see that. But I'll probably bring it all the way up and bring this out. Anyway, that will give you an idea of what I'm doing. This will be smoothed out, rounded all off so that there's no critical points for it to crack in. I'll round this out, smooth this up, and then we'll round this out, smooth this up in here so we can then come back, prime it, paint it, and um, then we'll give it a shot and you can all get to see what's going on and if it operates just fine. And at least it will give you a support for the front and it'll keep the uh, keep the moor deck from collapsing perhaps but I don't really see that as a problem because they're pretty tough got a lot of support here in the front a lot of support back here this will be ground back right here at a slight angle just so if it catches something it won't uh, make the mower come to an abrupt halt because that is pretty sharp right there so anyway as we get it done we'll bring the uh, video back show you what's going on so stay tuned. Okay guys, here we are back. And we've got a little more progress made, so we're going to show you where we're at and about what we're going to do. And it's, um, as you can see, we have uh, removed this portion of this support here from the Raptor RSD60 and um, we're just about getting ready to uh, prime and paint and uh, as you can see it's got a nice little sheen on it here and um, we're going to toy with even though we're going to paint it we're going to toy with these angles here and um, we'll get back to you and let you know what the best angles are for the cut because I'm going to go over and cut some wear from 24 to 48 inch material here in a minute over to fairgrounds and just um, see what kind of clumping or gathering or anything else this thing is doing and we will get back to you so all we got to do here is like I said is we're going to mask it off prime it put about three coats of paint on it and if that dries enough we will go over and mow that and then uh, I'm sure whatever paint comes off, we'll, we'll touch her back up again. But that's where we're at right now, and we'll get back to you as soon as we get a little prime on. 
Okay, we've got her masked off. It's not pretty. As you see, it is masked and it's ready to paint. So as soon as we get everything ready to go here, we will start throwing some paint on it. We'll try to show you how to do some of that as well. Alrighty, here we go guys. Let's see if we can get a little primer on this thing real quick. Try to protect some of that, that uh, bare metal. Now then, unless you want to just sit and watch paint dry, let's let that dry for a little bit. We'll come back, scratch it, and then we'll do a, just a little bit more prime on it. And we'll um, scratch that, then we'll try to put a little paint on there and see how she looks. But I see one place I'd like to have a little paint. That's right there. So we're going to right there. We're going to see if we can't make that look a little bit better. All right, guys, be back shortly. All right, here we are. It's not exactly dry. It's not really perfect, but, you know, um, got it uh, got to where it needs to be in order to be able to put a little yellow paint on it. So here we are. going to try to get a little yellow paint on there and see what she looks like after we get the paint in place. So let's see here. All right, let's see here. If we can get in there without blocking your light or not. But it's almost yellow and that's a fairly heavy light coat so we'll let that dry for a while a couple hours we'll come back scratch it up give another light coat and then let that set a couple hours we'll come back scratch it up give it a nice heavy coat then it's time to go to the fairgrounds and try to beat her up see what this uh, what this cutout does and see if it uh, can make any clumping or wind rolls or something like that so we will be cutting with the guard down not with it up and um, people have complained about the Hustler Raptor SD well all the Hustler Raptors with this bar right here in place they've complained about the wind rose and the clumping and wet grass and and first of all I say don't cut in wet grass but that's not necessarily um, everyone can't necessarily do that so of course this is to go out and cut in this wet grass today that's two foot to four foot tall and if I can find somebody to video it while I'm out there then I'll do that if I'm not then I'll just try to cut it and see what happens and and um, maybe try to take a before and after and see if that happens, see if that makes it any better but anyway um, depending on the weather today whether or not get out there and do that but main thing is this is the cutout this is um, this is how to paint the thing and da 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 and so we're getting to that point where we're almost there so a couple more coats of paint I think you'll uh, you may like it hopefully I like it so okay we'll be back shortly all right, let's try to get one more coat of paint on this thing, and that'll uh, that'll probably do what we need to do. And, uh, all right, here's the way we do this: as you're pointing at the surface, you start just outside it. You spray, and you get to the other end of it, to the past the surface. You release. You start back. You point. You squirt. You spray come back up and we get past the point you need to spray you release that's how you're going to get a really nice real even where you want it paint job and uh, let's see what we can make this one look like right here matter of fact I see something I want to cut off so I'm going to stop this one more time and I'm going to uh, check underneath this tape that I left a little long and just see if it's uh, 
see if it needed to be painted or for whatever reason I left that tape long so let me take a look alrighty here we go again so yep I left a little long shouldn't have so I've got a spot right down here don't know if you can see that or not but we'll go ahead and cover that up alrighty so here we go let's get uh, up under here Alrighty, this begin to look pretty good. Let's get down there and see if we can get a little closer look at it. And uh, see if we see any dull spots. I'll look back at this a little bit. Take a look at the video and see what I can see. And uh, I don't know, it's looking pretty good, boys and girls. So, let's, uh, let's go ahead and wait for the paint to dry. We'll go ahead and do some other things, come back. Oh, by the way, there is a paint um, casualty here. I got a little paint, as you can see, on the on the thumb. I was taking that paint off, that tape off a little ago, just a little bit ago. So, uh, and over here, you can see a little paint got on the tire when we get rid of that tape. So, I hate it, guys, but you know, even old professionals make mistakes once in a while. So, I don't have the gloves on. That's my fault. <laughs> so, anyway, we'll be back shortly. Okay guys, are we ready for a reveal here? I left the bottom the way it was just so you could see the difference in the paint color and uh, as we tear this down, don't know if you can hear me over the fan but it's extremely hot in the middle of Arkansas and I am in mid-Arkansas by the way if you've been looking for me <laughs> so uh, we're going to continue ripping off this tape so you can get an idea of the difference in the color I've got that I found available in this part of the world relative to the Hustler whatever they call their yellow and it is quite a bit of difference but it's still uh, better than it would have been had it been left to rust so uh, let's get this tape off here you get an idea of what it looks like and uh, see what else we might need to come back and and uh, touch up in case we don't like where we're at with it right here. So we're getting close and I'm casting a shadow. I can see that from here but bear with me. We'll get this done. Get my feet in your way there. Alright. Just about done guys. So here we go. I think it's back far enough to uh, to see if we got everything we need painted painted and let's take a look at it here so I'm gonna stop this for a moment and I'm gonna take a look at it and see if I need to go further all right I'm a little bit closer to the camera now so you might be able to hear me a little bit better and uh, I went ahead and I sprayed this on the outside right down here just to give it a nice even coat because we all know that, that at some point in time with this up we're probably going to come along here scrape the brick wall or edge of the house or something like that so I went ahead and touched this up by the time it's uh, it's scraped a few times we probably won't be able to tell the difference in the color however we could see that with my sharpie lines on there that um, if I decide I need to take it down a little bit more down through here then uh, I'll have a nice clean line to actually draw a straight sharpie line there to get a good cut on it which hopefully we don't need to do that but just in case we do so let me get down here a little closer so you can get an idea of what that paint looks like that I've put on here just now we're almost done guys we're almost at the fill goal so um, we'll, uh, we'll try to get this thing buttoned up and dried up enough to take it over there and do some cutting today before it gets too late in the day and disturbing the neighbors but especially since the uh, fairgrounds has a uh, rodeo thing going on this weekend they might not appreciate me too much but 
hey, you got to do what you got to do sometimes for sake of a good video. So here we go. We're going to get down here so you can take a look. Alrighty, there we are. So we'll be back later and try to get this finished up. Okay, I want to show you guys this and one of the reasons why I left this in here. Um, we're going to get down a little bit closer to it here in a moment so that you can see it. Uh, we do have the fan on the paint, making sure it drives as quickly as possible. But I don't know that we'll be able to see it without moving some lights and stuff around when I haven't done that yet. And my lights are really not made to do all that sort of thing. However, I've got a really bright Harbor Freight LED light here that we might be able to borrow for a moment and uh, shine a little light up for you. And we'll see if we can uh, get this Harbor Freight light going. You see the weld right down here, right? And we got to get a finger here for you so that paint's wet. But you see, right there, there is a, whoops, <laughs> there is a, a well there, and there's a well that comes all the way around there on the front of that reinforcement bar, or that safety bar, and that helps support this right here at this point, and out to about here, so that if you hit something pretty hard with that, it's still going to stay put because at that point, the, uh, the bar is still at its full depth here. So that'll give you an idea. So it's at full depth and that'll give you an idea of why I left that there so it'd have plenty of reinforcement. And um, we didn't thin out this area back here, which we could have taken that extra metal out of there fairly simply by jacking the mower up and hauling underneath it and then cutting that straight down and cutting out that weld. That'd thin this up a little bit. But I don't think the idea is to make the, the more lighter. The idea is just to uh, give you guys an idea whether this lower safety guard will allow the grass to go ahead and come out without clumping. Um, considering that I've never had that situation happen, even in wet grass in my Bermuda, then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to cut some genuine milkweed. Um, Dallas grass, everything in the world that they've, Johnson grass, everything is growing over there including every kind of weed you can dream up and just see if I can make it clump or windrow with this material still in. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. If it does, I will by all means say, buddy, I am defeated. Just the heck of it. I might cut that out, go back and do it again and see if that uh, gets rid of the clumping and wind roaring and if it does hey all you guys win <laughs> and I I just really hope nobody gets anything in there and gets that blade gets something because there is nothing from this point you can bring my finger at it from this point right here straight over because this needs something to keep this blade protected and um, any of you guys that's putting that that um, whatever they call that removal kit on there it is not protecting that blade um, I hope you never have a situation where someone walks up behind you and you turn or for whatever reason don't know they're there even and you may have this up and they get it within that blades cutting zone oh man that'd be bad so safety first guys uh, for all you guys that's putting it on, think about some way to cover that up at the top. At least that would help protect that blade some. And um, it won't protect your foot, something like that, or little kid's hands or whatever. But don't want to be morbid here. Just, just want you all to put safety first. And I think this bar here that's still in place, it's pretty thin. It's below the blade. Let's see how that works out. And we'll get back to you. Alrighty, well, back here at the Garage Mahal, it's time to finish this little video up about the deck support there on the Hustler Raptor SD. 
And there's after a little one acre half mowing. Everything looks good. Let's check out the paint, see how much is left after the cut. Now I think I can get down here and probably, um, I'm probably going here and clean up that paint right in here now. Get my finger on it. I don't know if we can see it, but right down here I need to get that tape off there. Give it a nice little, give it a nice little sanding and painting. But there you go. That's how much grass buildup's in there. Matter of fact, that is how much grass buildup's in there. And as you can see right here, the green grass on the on the new paint. So that's the end of it, guys, right there. There's absolutely no reason to uh, cut that completely out. And uh, I uh, I maintain that all you need to do is just lower that thickness so that the top of this support is at the top of the blade because I mean nothing hung up in there whatsoever wet or dry so there you go guys that's just my uh, take on it so you uh, you might want to do this you might not I'm not suggesting it I'm not telling you to do it and by all means whatever you do to your mowers make sure that you put safety first take care thank you for coming by Max's Garage Mahal if you appreciate the, uh, the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Hit that notification button. Thank you very much. Y'all come back now. Yeah.